talk about a famous person with disabilities named Helen. Talk about an inventor oh, named Charles Goodyear. Oh, so if you want to talk about Helen Keller or Charles Goodyear, which one do you want to talk about? Helen Keller? Okay, Helen Keller it is. Oh, it's it's Helen Keller. Yeah. Okay, Helen Keller. Yeah. Okay, Helen Keller. 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 Okay, Helen so we're going to talk about Helen Keller. Now, first I want to see if you can spell spell her name Helen. Just the first name Helen. Oops. Let's try on here. How do you spell Helen? A, yeah, H. E. Okay, now you're good at that. Let's try on this one. H, E. Oh, well, let's do no, no, We got no, so far. No, you got it. H, E. Oh, let's try on here. What's the next letter in hell and oh. L? Good. What's next? Uh. Oh, almost. Uh. E and uh. N. You got it. So she's got the phonetics really good. Yeah. Helen Keller. <laughs> All right. So Helen Keller who was born in the South in Alabama in the year 1880. <gasps> that was quite a while ago. Okay. okay. And she was really famous because of her disabilities and how she was able to overcome them. So, when she was born, she was actually a, a healthy baby, but when she was about one and a half, she got a disease. Maybe it was rubella, and it left her blind, B-O-I-N-D, blind, and deaf. Alright, Max. I want you to spell the word blind. Blind. B. B. Okay, on here. Uh, oh, blind. Blind. What's this? Uh, L. Good. Uh, Almost. Uh, I. Good. Uh, N. N. Uh, Almost. Uh, D. Blind. Now, I want you to tell me what. So, when she, when I say she was blind and she was deaf, so when she was blind, she was unable to see her surroundings. Oh, and she, she wasn't able to hear. Oh, All right, so I wanted to see if you heard me. Oh, so somebody who who is blind cannot cannot do what? Cannot, no, 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 no. Go away. Cannot. Oh. Let's try it on here, okay? Somebody who is blind cannot what? Uh. S. Good. Now over here. S. E. 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 Right. Somebody who's blind cannot see. Now how about somebody who is deaf? <laughs> Who's deaf? Let's try on here, okay? I know you can do it. On this, but this is a lot more choices. Somebody who's deaf cannot. If you are deaf, you cannot. Oh, let's try again. You cannot. Would you say? Okay, let's see what you got. You're so close. H, okay? Keep going. E, good. A, good. One more letter. R, that's exactly it. A deaf person cannot hear. Oh. Now you can imagine her growing up not being able to hear or see. And she had very many tantrums going on. Tantrums. T A N T R U M S. Tantrums. Now do you think that that Helen Keller might have had tantrums because being blind and deaf deaf made her made her scared? Or do you think it was because it made her mean? So do you think that, that Helen Keller was or mean? Mean. That's it. Just spell it. Spell the answer. It's S. S. Try again. C. Good. Keep going. A. Go. R. E. N. D. Right. So somebody who's blind and deaf is not very, very aware of their surroundings, right? You can take a step and all of a sudden fall, right? Or, you know, you don't know if somebody's close to you because you can't hear their voice. You can't communicate. So oh, yes, that would make her scared. Some people who might see her from the outside might think she was mean. But I think what you were doing is you were using, you were being empathetic and trying to understand what it was like to be in her shoes. So that's very important. I want you to understand this empathy. E-M-P-A-T-H-Y. Empathy is the ability to feel what somebody else is feeling by trying to put yourself in their shoes. So, 
going to talk a little bit more about what happened. Well, so by the time Helen was six, <laughs> her, parents, her parents were so worried that they didn't know what to do with her. And so they, they consulted somebody from a school from a school, a special school called Perkins, and they found a teacher named Ann Sullivan. Ann Sullivan, S U L L I V A N. And they hired her to be Helen Keller's teacher. So Ann Sullivan became no, no, no. became Helen Keller's what? Became her T. T. Good. E A T. T. Oh, almost. Oh, 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 oh. Let's let this get back. T E A C H. What's after that? Uh, e. e and last letter. Oh. All right. She became her teacher. Now I want to tell you something interesting about yeah. Ann Sullivan. When she was a teacher, but she was also one time a student at this academy because she was actually herself was partially blind at one at one time, blind. But she had a surgery that restored no, 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 no. most of her vision. No, no, but she still had she still was very hard to see. So this is where we get back to the empathy. She was able to understand Helen Keller because she had gone through similar experiences as as Helen. So what did I say it mean um when somebody is able to understand another person's feelings, what did we call that? We call that, we call it E, e good, uh, M, good, uh, oh, almost, E, M, P, P good, uh, A, keep going, oh, you got it, got it, got it, T, T good, uh, almost, uh, H, and y. y, that's right, we call it empathy. And that's something that we can all do. <gasps> So I think it's wonderful when a parent, see, a, sometimes a parent, you know, if, if you have an autistic son, you don't, you don't have autism yourself, but you can try to well, be well, well, by understanding and maybe well, understanding, you know, learning from other autistic people what it's like. So that's empathy. So that was very important. So, so when Ann Sullivan came to teach Helen Keller, she started with this. She gave Helen Keller a doll. Because Helen Keller was blind and deaf, she wanted to teach her a way to communicate. And you know what she did? She took her hand, so in one hand she put the doll, so that's like a doll, and in the other hand, in the other hand, she wrote the words, D, or the letters, D, O, L, L, right into her palm. So, what sense was she stimulating? Because she couldn't stimulate her eyes or her hearing. So what sense did she use to get to Helen Keller? Let's see if you can find out. T. T. Good. Yeah. Oh, almost T. Oh. oh, good. Keep going. Yeah. U. Keep going. Yeah. C and H. H. That's right. So instead of using her eyes and ears, she uses <laughs> Helen Keller's touch. <laughs> Now, in the beginning, she was doing that with everything. She'd put a pencil in Helen Keller's hand, and then she would write P-E-N-C-I-L. And she kept doing this and doing this. But in the beginning, Helen Keller, she got really, really upset. Now, if you ever get to see the movie Miracle Worker, you will see that one time she pulled a tantrum for like an hour. She was pulling um, and hair and kicking and screaming. So, do you think that learning to communicate for, for Helen Keller was easy or hard? What do you think? Oh! I think you're right. This is spelling now. H. A. Good. Keep going. R. D. Almost. D. D. Very good. I'm just curious now. Can you use your finger and spell it on here? Let's spell, let's spell hard. Right with your finger. Let's try. H. A. Good. Keep going. R. Keep going. G. Oh, almost. A little higher. D. D. Very good. So it was very, very hard. Oh. Now, <clears throat> think about what might have happened if Ann Sullivan said, oh, forget about it, you know. It is just too much trouble. Do you think that that would have been good for Helen Keller if Ann Sullivan said, oh, it's too hard? Would that be good or bad? B. B. Good. A. 
D. Yes, it would have been bad. So, I'll tell you, she kept trying and she kept trying. And so one day, one day, Ann Sullivan brought Helen Keller to the well outside. Now, back then, they didn't have indoor plumbing. They had to go outside, and they pumped the water from the ground to yeah. the well. And she put her hand under the water, and then all this water came over her hand, and she spelled in the hand W-A-T-E-R. And she kept doing that over and over. And all of a sudden, Helen Keller understood. She understood that words had meaning, and she got it. So we call this a, a breakthrough or a aha moment. So, so that's what happened. So what was the first word that Helen Keller finally understood? She understood the word. What was it again? Oh. Almost. A little bit lower. W, w good. F. A, good. Y. Oh, almost. T. T. E. E. Oh. R. Can you say that word? Because you can say it. W A T E R. What does that spell? Water. Water. Good. So that was the first word that she understood. So after that, after she got that, that moment of breakthrough, Helen Keller really started to take off. She started to understand all the different words that Ann Sullivan was spelling in her hand. And eventually, so this is many years, I'm kind of jumping ahead many years. So this was when, when she was young, but then all, you know, after many years, she proved that she was so smart that she was the first blind and deaf person to go to college. C-O-L-L-E-G-E. -E. And she went to Radcliffe College in Massachusetts. Okay, so I wanted to ask you, um, but you know what, she always needed Ann Sullivan to help her. So... Um, can a person with disability be successful? Do you think so? T. Try again. Y. Y. E. S. Now, do you think that that Helen could have the same success without Annie Sullivan's help? Do you think she'd have she'd be able to do all she could without her her help? And and what? T. Oh, and what? Almost. Uh. Oh no! Right. So. Somebody with disabilities has a real disability. You know, her, her sight and her hearing never went away, but she found a different way in order to, I wouldn't say overcome it, but a different way that, that she could still um, succeed. And you know what we call this? We call these accommodations. A-C-C-O-M-O, -O, I'm spelling it wrong. <laughs> accommodations. Sounds okay. Like so let's think of some accommodations that, that are for people with disabilities. So, you know, back back a long time ago, a lot of people have bad vision. And now you can wear things that will correct your vision. But back then, they didn't have these certain accommodations. But nowadays, if you have, are hard of seeing, what would be an accommodation for you? I'm good. Cabaret. G. Oh. L. A. Good. S. Keep going. S. Good. E, good. S, right. So glasses would be for somebody who's, who's hard of seeing. How about somebody who's hard of hearing? Can you think of an accommodation for somebody who's hard of hearing? There's many accommodations. You need to maybe think of one. Someone who's hard of hearing could use H, E, good. A, R, uh, yes. Keep going. A hearing, good. A, I, D, very good, a hearing aid. So, so you're getting it. How about somebody who, um, who's paralyzed and can't walk? What would be accommodation for somebody who cannot walk? What do you think? W, w good. H, good. E. Almost. E, e good. E. e, good, keep going. Uh. L, good. C, H, H. A, good. I, oh. R, very good, a wheelchair. Okay, now you're getting it. Very good. You've got it. All right. So let's talk, talk a little bit more about Helen Keller. So as she grew older and she went to college, she became uh, a disability advocate. And one way she advocated and, you know, helped others to, you know, be able to receive the accommodations they needed to have a full life 
was that she wrote her biography, or her autobiography. We call it an autobiography because it was written by herself. It wasn't written by somebody else. So an autobiography. Okay. And she also, believe it or not, I mean, this woman was an amazing woman. She actually gave talks, but she would give them through through Ann Sullivan. She would write into Ann Sullivan's hands, and Ann would be her voice. But she herself started to learn how to talk by feeling how the vocal cords move in the mouth. So I want you to give me um, a characteristic of Helen Keller. Knowing what she had experienced in her life and what she had to overcome, what, how would you describe Helen Keller? You would describe her as? A, good. M, A, T, one. Oh, 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 oh. Let's write what you got so far. A, M, A, keep going. A, M, A, G, Z, I, good. N, G, G. I would say so too. Let's see if you can if you can read this what you wrote. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, she was amazing. She was very amazing. And <clears throat> let's see. Oh, so another thing that Helen Keller learned was to to read. Okay? And so there's a special kind of book that you can read if you're blind. And it relies on you feeling the different bumps on the page which make different words. And it's called Braille. B R A. I-L-L-E. Now, Braille is, um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's a special kind of reading thing for the, for if, you, or if you're blind. Now, how about something, let's say um, you're deaf, but you have your vision. Um, you can watch TV, right? And you can still get, get what's going on. Can you think of what that's called when you watch TV and you're deaf and you can still understand what's going on? Let's see. So I'll talk about Braille. What, what, what would be the thing on the TV? C, good. L, good. O, S, E, close. C, A, almost. P, P, good. P, T, oh, 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 almost. I, O, and right, closed caption for the hearing impaired. You probably heard that when watching TV. So, <laughs> very good. Very good. All right, now. We're almost done with this one. Okay, so what about um, Ann Sullivan? We talked about Helen Keller a lot. So how would you describe Ann Sullivan? I want to tell you that Ann Sullivan stayed with Helen Keller for 50 years of her life. In fact, even when she was married, she always had Helen Keller living with her. That's quite amazing also. But I want you to tell me now a characteristic of Ann Sullivan her teacher. What would you say? What would you say would be a characteristic of her? Oh. L? No, 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 no. Oh. O? Good. What? Y? Good. Okay. L, O, Y. Let's start with that. L, O, Y. Keep going. L, O, Y. Uh. A? Oh. L. Loyal. Isn't that amazing? That's such a great characteristic of a person to be loyal. Um, so yes, I would say in my book, both of them were heroes. <coughs> okay. So, all right. I want to ask you now, has Helen Keller inspired you in any way? Why? E. I see, she inspires me as well. All right. Now, let's see if you can tell me one way that she inspires you. You can use a sentence if you want. Oh. Okay. Let's go ahead. Uh, and oh. Oh no. Okay, you don't have to use a sentence. <laughs> Would you just like to tell me in one word how she inspires you? V. Oh, try it again. I'm sorry. V. V. E. e R. R. Y. Okay. Let me write that down. Very. Very. Okay. Very. Y. P. P. Okay. E. R. S. I. S. T. T. Good. A. Almost. N. T. Very persistent. I would 
so as well. Oh, oh. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> All right, well, very, very good. You actually went through this lesson a lot faster than I thought. We got nine more minutes, but we can still keep going. Okay. So we talked about um, Helen Keller, and she was blind and deaf. We have, you know, young people think that there's only five senses, but we're, I'm going to teach you about six senses because you're 15. So six senses, okay? So we already kind of went through the first two, sight and hearing. And you, you did tell me about touch, so we have three right here. Okay. Can you tell me the three other senses? I might help you with the sixth one because you may not know the sixth one. Okay, uh, sight, hearing, touch, what else? S, good. E, e N, S, E. Oh, senses, you're writing senses. Okay, yes, yeah, senses. Now, how about when you're eating food, you really want to have two senses. Sometimes you think you only need one, but think about when you have a stuffy nose. You can't really, well, anyways, I'm, I don't want to give you the answer, but think about when you're eating, what two senses do you want to use when you're eating? T, T good. A, S, T, T, very good. Taste is one. Taste. And how about the other one when you're eating? What do you want to have? S, good. Oh, try again. You're so close. S, M, good. E, keep going. You got it. L, good. One more. L, right. What does that say? I'm only pushing you because I know you're capable. What's that? Smell. Smell. Good, smell. All right, now the sixth one I want to say. Now this one I feel like a lot of autistic people may have a hard time with, only because my, my son has told me this. Maybe it's not for you, but when we have our, our body in different positions in space, we want to know that my hand is here and not back there, or my leg is on the floor. Sometimes... You don't know where your body is in space. So when, when you have that sense of knowing where your joints and your body is in space, we call this proprioception. P-R-O, pro, proprioception. Proprioception. It's just knowing where your body is in space. Do you have a, how about you? Do you have a good sense of proprioception? I'm just curious. Why, okay? E, S, that's good, that's good. Now, <clears throat> tell me, um, somebody who should have a very good sense of proprioception. Uh, I don't know. Think about a high school, okay? You have your musicians, your jocks, your cerebral people. Um, who should have a good sense of proprioception out of those? I. Okay, let's try again. I think you were close to it. Okay. Try one more time. J, good. O. C. K, S, right, the jocks. Right, what's another word for jocks? I probably didn't use a very nice name for that, but what's another name for a jock? A, T, good. H, L, good. E, T, T, E, right, an athlete. Very good. So an athlete should have a good sense of proprioception. Now, I want to do say that all of these things, all of the senses can be improved, I think. Well, we talked about accommodations, but I, I can tell you my son, he doesn't have a very good sense of proprioception, but he's building it. Because he learned how to ride a bike, and he's kind of learning to train his body. So he's kind of compensating. And, you know, your brain is always changing, so your brain can develop the connections to, to enhance all of these things. So that's, there's a lot of hope there. All right, what else can I tell you? All right, let me tell you about, this is something you should know. Okay, in 1990, and Helen Keller was a big, big force in this, you know, history building, but she wasn't alive in 1990, but because of her advocacy work throughout her life, um, finally in 1990, there was something called the Americans with Disabilities Act. Americans with... I'm not going to write the whole thing. Disabilities Act. So it's also called the ADA. ADA. Okay. And it, it protects the rights of people with disabilities. And so people with disabilities have the right to go to school, to have jobs, to have civil liberties that everybody enjoys. Okay. 
Um, <coughs> so, let me see. So what was the year that, that the ADA was passed? Let's see if you remember. I'm going to flip this over so you can just copy it. So what year was that? Come on. Come on. You're so fast. <laughs> it's very fast. 1990, that's right. Okay. Now, we have four more minutes. How about you? Do you have a disability? Why? What's your disability called? A. Two. Good. Ah, yes. Keep going. S. Good. M. Can you say that? Can you read it? A U T I S M. How do you say that? Autism. Autism. Good. Autism is your disability. But just because you have an, uh, a disability, does that mean that your life ends? And, oh, that's right. No, it doesn't end. In fact, sometimes people with disabilities. Think about Helen Keller and the impact she had on the world. Not your ordinary person can have that same kind of impact. So sometimes it's those people that have a very like special, unique way about them that can really change the world. So I just want to say there's so much hope for you. And I want to ask you, what is something, um, what is something that you would like to accomplish? W, okay. Keep going. W, L. Oh, 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 W, L doesn't quite make sense. Let's try again. Okay, start from the beginning. Start from the beginning. W, good. Keep going. R, I, okay. T, E. Okay, let me write that down. Right. No, no, no. Right. You're doing great. Keep going. Right. R. Okay, I think you got off. Right, try again. Start from there. Right, M, good. Y, keep going. My, S, keep going. T, good. O, good, keep going. R, good. Y, write my story. Good. You got like one more minute. I'm going to stretch it out. You're like, you got one minute. All right, great. My story. So, um, what? Okay. What can I ask you? Mom, do you have a question? <laughs> oh, God. I, the only thing that popped up to me was, uh, like, what's word, one word to describe your story? Like, what do you want people to know about your story? Ah, all right. What is one thing you want people to know about your story? All right. A. M. I am. S. M. A. R. T. T. You are smart. That is smart. no doubt. Yeah, okay, we are, we are like a sliver. That's her. I think we'll give this to him since you did so well. <laughs> you did great. You did great. Oh my goodness. That was okay. So we're done with your first, and now I want you're probably tired a little bit. So we're gonna uh -huh. let you relax. If you want to sit on the couch or go outside on the trampoline or watch TV. Whatever you want to do, you want to sit here, that's fine too. I'm TV! TV, all right, there we go. <laughs> He's a loud answerer. <laughs> so we can go over there, let him watch some TV. Maybe. Um, Mom and Lisa will have a little chat. Yeah, we'll have a little chat.